In September 1960, a four-day international conference with a banquet at Guildhall was held in London to celebrate the passing of a bill by the British Parliament a hundred years before. This was the first general law of its kind in any country in the world. Its purpose? To prevent the adulteration of our food and drink. It came about through the courage of two men, Arthur Hassel and Thomas Wackley, who bought more than 2,500 samples of food from London shops, analysed them and published the results. The public became alarmed and demanded action. With modern methods of protection, the adulteration of food is extremely rare today. Nowadays, we just don't expect to find alum in our bread, potato flour in our lard, or too much water in our beer. Modern methods of preservation also help in getting pure, untainted food onto the dinner table. If you're wondering what they're harvesting, here's your answer. Since time began, Man has searched for ways of preserving the summer glut of food to tide him over the lean winter months. Nowadays, food preservation is even more vital, as most of us live in towns or cities far from the supply of food. By far the most widely used method of preservation is canning. This pea crop will end up in cans within minutes of being cut. Canning began with a Frenchman, Nicolas Appen, but it was an Englishman, Brian Donkin, who became the first commercial canner 150 years ago. The British Navy was the biggest customer for Brian Donkin's canned food. In 1817, he sold 6,000 pounds worth. Today, the British industry's yearly figure approaches 200 million pounds. Early cans were handmade. A tinsmith could produce 10 a day. A modern line turns out over 700 a minute. Some of these old cans are survivors of the Crimean War, the Boer War, and Scott's Antarctic Expedition of 1910. And the food inside is still good. The British food manufacturing industries have a research association at Leatherhead. In their laboratories, a 50-year-old can is opened to have its contents tested. This can was found recently in the Antarctic in a food dump left behind by Scott. Food technologists want to know what changes take place inside the can during long storage. One of the most vital questions is, does it still taste good? And the verdict is, yes it does. One of the traditional methods of preserving foods is pickling. This small factory is world famous for its sauces and pickles. Into the bubbling cauldron go tamarind, spices, chutney, tomato puree and vinegar to produce sauce diable, to titillate the palates of the world's epicures. People's taste in pickles has changed over the last hundred years. Today's housewife demands a milder taste in pickled onions. But if the vinegar is weakened too much, the onions go soft. The answer was found to be in pasteurization, applied to onions for the first time in the laboratories of the Research Association. This is only one of hundreds of research problems tackled here every year. This girl is examining the natural pigment in pickled cabbage and using a hairdryer to help. The very latest method of preserving food has been developed at the government's experimental factory at Aberdeen. This method is known as accelerated freeze drying, or AFD. A wide variety of dried foods has been produced, from roast beef to milk puddings. Ever thought of having six pennies of dried fish and chips? Well, you can't buy them in the shops yet, but that's what's going through the production line here. Centuries ago, men discovered that the removal of moisture helped to preserve foods. Strips of meat and fish were simply laid out in the wind and sun to dry. More recently, a current of hot air has been used for dehydration. But in the process of AFD, one of the first steps is to deep freeze the food. After freezing, the trays of chips are placed in this dehydrating cabinet. Low heat is applied in a high vacuum. The ice crystals that have formed in the chips during freezing are changed direct into vapor.
when the chips come out of the dehydrating chamber, they look much the same as when they went in, but they're less than a quarter the weight, and so long as they remain dry, they'll keep indefinitely. So much for the chips. How about the fish? The cod cutlets also look much as they did before. They're much the same size and shape, but once again, the difference is in the weight. On one side of the balance goes a fresh cod cutlet. On the other, one dried cutlet, two, three, four, and five. They've been reduced to one-fifth their previous weight and when wrapped will keep indefinitely. AFD foods are prepared by adding water and cooking in the normal way. At present, they're being tested by the armed forces as aircraft emergency rations in lifeboats and dinghies. On an Antarctic expedition to last him 20 days, a man would need this much fresh food. It weighs 155 pounds. This sledging box, used by expeditions today, weighs only 58 pounds, will feed a man equally well for 20 days and will keep for at least two years. And here is a one-day mountain assault pack for two men, such as Sir Edmund Hillary took on his Himalayan expedition. The Eskimos were probably the first people to preserve food by freezing. They had a natural refrigerator right on the doorstep but the rest of the world had to wait for complex freezing plants to be developed. In a modern frozen food factory such as this, the degree of hygiene practiced would amaze and delight the average housewife. Women workers wash their hands every half hour as a matter of routine. Everyone wears a head covering, even the electrician. Even the supervisor. A trained inspector goes round examining the women's hands. A trained nurse is always in attendance. The metal strip in the plaster is so that a metal detector can stop the production line if the plaster comes off the girl's hand. Sausage rolls have to be made by hand, but every possible precaution is taken to ensure cleanliness and hygiene. Now it's time to wash again. Today, this degree of care is normal in progressive factories during the manufacture and preserving of food. Not only manufacturers, but many shopkeepers too are doing their best to see that the nation's food reaches the customer pure, clean and untainted. Many foods are packaged to keep out dust and flies. And although there are still 15,000 cases of food poisoning reported in Britain every year, it's been a century of remarkable progress.